Welcome back, Choice Justice League, to episode three of JJL Live. I'm Mike Frusius with your weekly video game news roundup, insight, and commentary. We're going to part three right now with both Microsoft and Sony News because I'm running out of time and I still want to get into the Greek Speaks final segment where I discuss why frame rate matters to gaming. So let's let's get going right now. Let's not waste words. Let's start with Microsoft. First, the good news is that they clearly have by consumer surveys and initial sales reports, one Black Friday by a pretty wide margin. Um, basically between the Xbox One and the 360 in terms of actual consoles sold, they had 62% market, market share versus Sony's 32% between the PS3 and PS4, and then of course 6% going to the Wii U. Now what's interesting about all these stats is that over 90% of the console purchases made during Black Friday were actually bundled with a game, and 75% of the people polled said that the bundled game definitely influenced their purchase. And um, in terms of price, the price drop, 71% cited buying the Xbox One because of the price drop versus 48% of PlayStation users buying it because of the PS4's price. So uh, it shows you that Blake Jorgensen was right. When I was talking earlier on JGL Live on another podcast about how he felt that Microsoft, with their price drop and their value-added bu value added bundles of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Assassin's Creed Unity, and Black Flag, and I believe there was also another one for Master Chief Collection, that combined with the $50 price drop would propel them through the holiday season and, and put them on a more equal footing with uh, Sony's PlayStation 4 going into 2015. And it looks like this is the case. Now, as I said before as well, is that this is just short-term thinking. Don't think that this is just going to automatically propel Xbox into like this massive lead because Whereas Sony is kind of taking the hit this holiday in terms of you know taking a back seat to Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, Master Chief Collection, Sunset Overdrive, they're taking a back seat this holiday, but they're making moves, okay, and responding to some of Microsoft's gaffes to poise themselves for 2015. We already know that Sony's got a major list of exclusives starting to come out in February. We've got in March. We have Bloodborne. We have the Order 1886. We have uh, Planet Side 2, which is supposed to go into beta at the end of the year. So a lot of big guns coming. Of course, Arden Charted 4 at the end of next year. And who else? Who And who knows what David Jaffe is supposed to announce this weekend coming up at the PlayStation Experience. Yes, it is confirmed. I got to mention this real quick that David Jaffe, the creator of God of War and Twisted Metal, will be revealing his new IP. And... Be careful because he was trolling people like myself on Twitter who drank the Kool-Aid and actually believed when he posted that, oh yeah, we're going to reveal the new God of War, that's for sure. So yeah, it's most likely not going to be God of War. But regardless, there are some exclusives in Sony's favor. Now, when I mentioned uh, about a minute ago that Sony is responding to Microsoft's gaffes, especially in the foreign arena. Let's look at what's going on in Japan that has been kind of lighting the internet on fire. News that Microsoft's Japanese boss, Takashi Sensui, has resigned as the chief of Xbox Japan and will actually be replaced by a former 25 years Sony staffer, Takahashi Minami, who actually joined back in July, so it's now official. He'll be taking over Xbox Japan to help out the, the ailing uh, a franchise within the Japanese market, and I mean, really, like I was just reading a report from Luke Carmali of IGN, just looking at some of the, the the horrible stats. The Xbox One has only sold just under forty thousand units in Japan, and about twenty three thousand of these were sold at launch in September, whereas the 360 actually doubled these numbers in its first two days in two thousand five. These are actually the lowest numbers. I'm sorry to laugh, but it's just like. It's been clear in the past that Microsoft is an American developer trying to get into a foreign marketplace, and I don't think they're going to understand the needs of the Asian gamer as well as Sony does. But regardless, lowest numbers for Japanese console launch in recent years, and the PS4, by contrast, has sold more than 300,000 units since its own launch just this past February. So I think it's pretty clear between Nintendo and uh, Sony that they have kind of a lock on the Asian markets, and, and when we turn over to Sony News, I'm going to explain how the Chinese factor is going to also uh, multiply this. So I've got about a couple minutes left on this segment. Um, let's keep going with Microsoft real quickly. Um, NeoGAF reported that via MediaCrate, 
that the figures show that only 70, 776 Xbox Xbox One units sold last week compared to the PS4 and Wii U with 12,400 12, and 9,600 sold respectively. So you can see the trend that the Xbox had a, a, had a fairly decent launch in Japan, although even then it's like we, we saw the launch day photos of all those boxes and, and the non lineups when it actually launched and, and it just it was just it was terrible. Um, you can see that the momentum has slowed and that's that's not surprising. I mean Microsoft serves a very North American audience. They're very focused on shooters, you know, American you know hero action games. Whereas now we we already understand that the Japanese game de de uh, tastes are much different. They're more into like RPGs, strategy games, visual novels, Monster Hunter games mobile games it's a much they're not as big into like the first person shooters i mean it's not like to say that asians don't play call of duty or whatever call of duty online is very big in china actually but overall tastes are a lot different um in the east versus the west and i don't think microsoft ever really understood that phil spencer in hindsight gets it i mean he did tweet out as a response to a fan that you will see jrpgs on xbox one but it's not clear what those are going to be he hasn't announced whether he's made any partnerships with like atlas or or, or like i mean i only want to act like i'm an expert here i'm even just I, i've just been introducing myself but there's there's no there's no indication that you're ever going to see tales of exilia or nino kuni or or the game or level five announce a game for the xbox one it's just it almost seems just kind of like a tweet to show that they're thinking about it but they're not really committing all right so we got about a minute left um well, let's extend this, this sequence, and then maybe I'll just kind of extend the show by about five minutes. So we'll go a little bit over an hour, but it's okay. Um, let's finish off this section with some Sony news. So while Xbox is failing horribly in Japan, Sony's doing okay, obviously, because, you know, it's the PS4. It's, it's got with Japanese gamers, but also penetration into the Chinese market is about to start on December 11th. So if you've been following what's going on in the Chinese game industry, the 14 year old ban on consoles in China was actually lifted last January, allowing for overseas competitors and, and even like competitors like Nintendo or Sony or Microsoft to start selling their consoles to Chinese customers via the Shanghai free trade zone. Um, of course it would be limited to the Chinese government's strict rules on censorship, of course, I don't think that the games, once they get localized, are going to be exactly the same as you see over here, but it shows a willingness for the Chinese government to expand the 21st century and to allow their citizens to get into gaming. Because honestly, just doing some research on the Chinese game industry via report from the Chinese, the China game industry annual conferences, China Games Party, I found out some pretty interesting things that this is a big market. This is a really like exponentially over, over many years. From 2008 to 2013, the growth of the China games industry is just tremendous. From from a, from a three about three billion dollar industry in 2008 to what is it, 13 billion dollars last year, and and it's mostly in the PC market because that's pretty much what they have. They haven't the the, the mo, most modern Chinese gamers aren't accustomed to having a console at this point up till now. They've had mobile and they've had PC. And what do we understand about PC gaming? It's usually rooted in strategy, in MOBAs, in MMOs. That is what is popular in China. They're not into like a lot of things that we're into here, like, you know, first first person shooters and third person action games they're more into strategy but they are adopting i mean look like uh chinese developer uh tencent has been responsible for localizing assassin's creed i believe and especially call of duty online so it shows that the the, the market is growing and, and sony is tapping into this because eventually once you start seeing like we're seeing in brazil happening right now and a lot of these Latin communities, which are starting to create their own game communities and are, and are getting those titles out through Sony's, um, you know, uh, third world indie partnerships. Now you're going to see in China, they're going to start to develop their own kind of industry. We're going to start to see something that's different from other Asian games. Whereas right now, a lot of North Americans understand what constitutes a Japanese game, what a, what a JRPG is, or, 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 or what a Monster Hunter clone is, is about, or what a Pokemon type of game is. Like, we understand kind of, or even like games like Had a Full Boyfriend, you know, the pigeon dating simulator that's coming out soon for PS4 and Vita. 
We understand there's a certain quirkiness, something different to the Japanese psyche, and I think we're gonna see that coming out of Chinese game development as well. Possibly the birth of the CRPG or, or the CRTS or, or something crazy. But all we know is that if you're a PlayStation fan at some point, once these games start coming out the gate, we'll eventually start seeing the cream of the crop start to get localized over to North America and that's just gonna benefit gamers as a whole. All right, so I gotta wrap up this uh, this section on Sony and Microsoft news, but one quick uh, correction. Um, based on recent Sony outlook, I gotta mention this real quickly before we go that Sony has announced uh, last week that they're gonna be getting out of the TV and mobile markets and focusing, I think, 25% more resources on the PlayStation brand, about an increase of, uh, what, what were we looking at here? I had the figures in front of me. I think it was like, um, fuck, 13.6 billion or something like that. What was it? Uh, yeah, 13.6 billion USD is what they're gonna be investing into strengthening the PlayStation brand. And that's really been fueled by various subscription costs like PlayStation Plus, Music Unlimited, PlayStation Now, all that fun stuff. So what's happening, if they're gonna be cutting their ties to the TV market, I mean, sorry, the mobile market especially, what does that mean for remote play on the Z3, that thing that you see all over the PlayStation store that they're hyping up right now? Are they gonna to continue to support it? I don't know. So maybe, despite all the positive reviews, I might hold off on getting that Xperia Z3 because I don't know how much longer Sony is gonna be uh, willing to dedicate resources to the device. And also gotta correct myself that I said earlier that up until now you couldn't find these Xperia devices at Rogers Canada. They've gotten into the Xperia game for better or worse now, so you can actually get the Z3 and the Z2 at Rogers. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm gonna wrap up uh, things in part four of JJL Live episode three with uh, another episode of The Greek Speaks where I go down the reasons why frame rate matters to video gaming and in what context. Stay tuned.